All right, so we looked at the binomial setting yesterday. That's what the notes are all about. Simple enough. A lot going on there, but in the end, you just kind of doing that with your calculator. And as long as you know what your calculator is actually doing for you, you're fine. But what about now if we have a slightly different scenario where this is taken out. So in other words, there's not a fixed end. There's not a, we're going to take 20 shots and see how many balls go in the hoop. But now, the variable is going to change to, oops, how many until first success. So in other words, this is now out. These are all still good, but now we want to know how many until the first success. So in other words, the basketball player is going to stand at the hoop and start shooting, and how many shots until the person puts the ball in the hoop. This is called geometric, weirdly, distribution. Distri and the only thing that changes is you don't have a fixed n anymore. Now the variable of interest is how many until the first success. All right, let's take a look at this prompt right here. So let's say this is true, and I don't know if it is. I don't. I just kind of made up the 22%, but let's just pretend. That 22% of all vehicles in use in the United States are indeed Ford F-150s. It's probably not far off that. When you're randomly choosing vehicles in use, so in other words, you're just like randomly picking cars that are actually in use, how many vehicles can you expect to choose before you get an F-150? So let's look at that one first. First, you have to see that that's different than the binomial setting. It is success-fail. You either get a Ford F-150 or don't. It is independent. There's no reason to say knowledge of one tells you anything about the next. And... The probability is the same every time you pick a vehicle. It's 22% or Ford F-150, so every time you pick one vehicle, there's a 22% chance it's going to be an F-150. But this time, there's no fixed end. There is no, I'm going to pick 20 cars. Now I'm going to keep going until I get one. And that's the geometric setting. So what can you expect? It's a pretty simple formula for us. Remember, expect value is the mean of a random variable. So you, can you expect? You can expect this. Now, intuitively, if I had used a simpler number, like say 25%, you would have guessed 4. You would have said, if I had said 25% of all vehicles in the United States Ford F-150s, then you would, and, and then I asked you, how many can you expect to choose before you get an F-150, you would have instinctively said 4. That you would have seen that without realizing what you were seeing. And what you were seeing, most likely, what you were seeing was this you're going to take 1 over that probability. and one, Indeed, 1 over 0.25 is 4. And so in this case, you're going to have 1 over 0.22, which equals 4.545. So, yeah, you're not going to get 0.545 of a car, but that is the expected value. That is the mean, 4.545, not rounded off to 4. Now, the next question then asks us, What's the probability you don't choose an F-150 until your sixth choice? Well, first of all, you have to say what happens here. You have to get no, 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 yes. Now, what's the probability of getting a no? Well, it's going to be 1 minus 0.22, right? So 0.78. And then what's the probability of getting a no? Another 0.78. And then what's the probability of getting another no? 0.78 and a no, 0.78, and a no, 0.78, and a yes, 0.22. That's the, what has to happen. So you are correct. That's exactly what you do if that's your thought. You'd multiply 0.78 times itself, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, and then you'd multiply that by 0.22, which comes out to 0 0.0635. Let me shrink that for us, and then... We'll call it, that comes out to 0.78 to the fifth power times 
0.22, and that came out to 0 0.06. So there's a 6% chance that you would not get an F-150 until your sixth choice. What about your tenth? Well, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take 0 0.78 times 0 0.78 times 0 0.78 times 0 0.78 times 0 0.78 nine times. So now you have 0 0.78 to the ninth power times 0 0.22. And that comes out to 2% chance. Simple enough. So let's make a formula for this, shall we? And there you go. In the geometric setting, the probability that the random variable is some given number, so like in my examples up here, 6 and 10, that would be the K, is 1 minus the probability of success, so that would have been the 0.78 number we used, times the K minus 1, because if you're going to get something on your 10th choice, then you're going to have 10 minus 1, 9 failures, and then times the probability of success, because you're only looking for one of those, and that's it. Now there's also a calculator function for this. This one is not nearly as necessary, because what I just showed you is actually not that difficult to deal with. But there's also geometric PDF and geometric CDF. And they have the same thing going on. The only difference now is what you type. In the binomial, you typed NPX. In geometric PDF and CDF, you just type PX, because there is no N for both. And they do the same things. This is for a particular value. So the examples we just looked at, we'd use PDF. What's the probability to get it on the 10th or the 6th? That would be PDF. And then CDF is when you have to accumulate. And this is where you would want to use this calculator function. If the prompt said to you, what's the probability it takes at least five choices? So then you want everything from five through infinity, I guess. Now there's a couple more things to the geometric uh, distribution. If you'd graph it, it has to be right skewed because the more and more you add, the less and less of a chance it's going to be because you continually are multiplying by a decimal. So it's going to keep lowering it down and down. And in this one instance, even though there is a mean, we're not going to worry about the standard deviation. But don't mix up the means. Don't forget that the mean of the binomial is the, uh, not this. The mean of the binomial we already knew as just simply n times p. Now the mean of the geometric is 1 over p. Don't mix those up. Make sure your notes are clearing that up for you. And that is geometric.